You're all pretty much f Michael Douglas is a famous actor, producer, and representative of the famous acting dynasty. He's made a successful career akin to his father's Kirk Douglas and became a true Hollywood legend. We will tell you about his past to the top in this video. How Michael Douglas Lives and How Much He Earns Michael Kirk Douglas was born on September 25, 1944 in the young acting family of Kirk Douglas and Diana Dill. The boy was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, but soon the family moved to New York. Two and a half years later, Michael had a younger brother, Joel. The family lived in a one-room apartment in the Greenwich Village area. Right now, our hero is called the heir to the show business's royal dynasty, but back then, his parents were just starting their careers. Kirk spent most of his time in California filming under a studio contract, and his marriage with Diana couldn't withstand it. Michael's parents divorced when he was six years old, and he stayed with his mother. Seven years later, she remarried. Stepfather became the first adult Michael could talk to about anything, and thanks to whom the young man felt confident for the first time. But at school, none of the teachers could restrain his violent temperament. Even though Michael studied well, he skipped classes and talked back to the teachers. For some time, the young man worked at a mobile gas station. Some days, he was an employee of the month, and other days, he would track cars and steal spare parts from them with his friends. In addition to his stepfather, the authority for Douglas Jr. was his father, who managed to become a movie icon for the whole of America. Michael was so impressed by Kirk's films and the time spent with him on the set during the summer holidays that he also wanted to become an actor. He often asked his father which doors to knock on to break into Hollywood, but he was categorically against his son's choice of profession. However, when Michael enrolled at the University of California as a dramatic arts major and played in theatrical productions, Kirk came to his son's every performance, no matter how busy he was. At university, Douglas became friends with Danny DeVito, who later became his flatmate. They rented an apartment in New York for $150 a month. At the same time, the young man earned a living by delivering coffee at the cinema and working behind the scenes. Nevertheless, Kirk contributed to the beginning of his son's acting career. Together, they starred in and produced the 1966 film Cast a Giant Shadow. The following roles came only several years later. In the late 60s, early 70s, Douglas starred in several TV series and films such as Hail Hero and Summer Tree. On the set, the young man met a young promising actress, Brenda Vaccaro. The couple was inseparable for six years, living like hippies and vowing eternal love to each other. Michael calls this time the most wonderful in his life. But the relationship ended abruptly. Brenda just got in the car and left. The young actor's first significant work was the role of an inspector in the TV series The Streets of San Francisco, which he received in 1972 and played for five years. I've got two eyewitnesses. What do they see? Police brutality. Oh, come on now. Joe Landers? Look, he may be a little hard-nosed, but he never manhandled anybody. I don't buy that. All right, did they see the gun go off? Not who was holding it, no. His partner on the set was Kirk Douglas, friend Carl Malden. He called Michael the son he never had and insisted on his participation in the project. Interestingly, even after moving to Hollywood, Michael continued to pay his part of the rent while DeVito remained in New York. Also in 1972, our hero appeared in the films When Michael Calls and Napoleon and Samantha. The latter has become a classic of American children's films. Later, Douglas was caught up with the work behind the scenes. He directed one of the episodes of Streets of San Francisco and began working on the film adaptation of Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The rights to the film adaptation belonged to Kirk, but he abandoned the hope of implementing the project, so he handed them over to his son. The film surpassed all expectations, winning five Oscars and bringing fabulous profits to the Douglas dynasty. Since then, our hero has acted as a producer in many films in which he starred. In 1977, Michael married the daughter of an Australian diplomat, Deandra Luker, and a year later, they had a son, Cameron. According to both spouses, their life together was like a volcano. It subsided for a while, then erupted with terrible force. And there were a lot of infidelities. 
Deandra said in an interview that she once caught her husband with her friend, but each time she forgave him. In 1978, the thriller The China Syndrome was released. Douglas's payout, in which amounted to $262,000. For his next film, the sports drama Running, Michael trained a lot and ran about 55 miles a week. In addition, he stopped smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and lost almost 13 pounds. Then, the movie It's My Turn came out, but a successful career had to be put on pause for several years. In 1980, Douglas was seriously injured at a ski resort and returned to the screens only in 1983 with the crime thriller The Star Chamber. It then became widely known, unlike his next work, the adventure film Romancing the Stone. Michael, who also became the producer, bought the script for $250,000, and as a result, the box office around the world exceeded $85 million. Equally successful was the sequel titled The Jewel of the Nile in 1985, although Douglas took part in the sequel without much desire. Soon, the musical A Chorus Line was released on the screens, and in 1987, the world saw two hits at once, Fatal Attraction and Wall Street. For the former, Douglas received $13 million, and for the later, two major film awards, a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In addition, the role of the stock market shark and concurrently the main villain ironically inspired many people to make a career in economics and the stock market. In 1989, Michael presented to the audience the crime thriller Black Rain and the comedy The War of the Roses. In the latter, he worked with his friend Danny DeVito. Then he produced several films including the action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Double Impact, and starred in the military drama Shining Through. But the absolute hit of 1992 was the thriller Basic Instinct, for which Douglas received 15 million. My sex life's actually pretty shitty since I stopped seeing you. Started developing calluses. According to Michael, shooting the sex scene with Sharon Stone was torture because they had to repeat the choreography for 10 hours of the shooting day for five days in a row. In addition, the actor forbade shooting himself naked from the front. By the way, he performed almost all the car stunts on his own. The role of the detective from Basic Instinct became one of the brightest in Douglas' career. But he didn't get stuck in one role. In the next movie, Falling Down, he appeared in the image of an average guy who cannot stand the injustice of the world. To participate in the project, Michael canceled a family vacation and later called this role his favorite. Then, the actor added several roles to his filmography in the film's Disclosure with a payout of $12 million and American President. While working on the latter, Douglas discovered a distant relationship to U.S. President Richard Nixon and both Bush, and the payout amounted to $15 million. His intuition for hits didn't let the actor and producer down. Each of his next projects was a great success. For example, the adventure film The Ghost and the Darkness and the thrillers A Perfect Murder and The Game, for each of which Michael received $20 million. Oh, no, you've got to be kidding. What is happening? This is what I was trying to explain to you. This is a, uh, a game. Meanwhile, big changes were taking place in his personal life. Since the mid-90s, their marriage with Deandra was a conformity, and they just couldn't agree on the terms of the divorce. Even the marriage contract didn't make the task easier because Deandra wanted to increase the amount of compensation and Michael wanted to reduce it. At the same time, he was invested in a new relationship. In 1998, at the screening of The Mask of Zorro, he saw Catherine Zeta-Jones and was so fascinated by her that he immediately declared his desire to become the father of her children. Later, the actress would admit that she immediately fell in love with him but didn't want to have an affair with the taken man. However, six months after they met, they would spend hours on the phone talking about everything in the world. After that, the relationship developed rapidly. On New Year's Eve of 1999, Catherine was already pregnant and Michael offered his beloved a long-prepared ring with a 10-carat diamond surrounded by 28 smaller stones. Its cost is estimated from $1 to $2 million. The actor's first wife then, without sarcasm, told reporters that he would have to change his religion to one where polygamy is allowed. But Douglas was already ready to agree to all DeAndre's conditions. So in 2000, he paid her $45 million and left her a mansion in Beverly Hills, as well as half of the estate in Majorca. 
By the way, Michael tried several times to find a buyer for his luxury property, but since the ex-wife remained the co-owner, he took it off the market. In August of the same year, Catherine gave birth to their first child, Dylan Michael, and in November, they had a gorgeous wedding of the year, which cost the actor $2 million. However, $1 million was covered because the magazine OK paid for an exclusive photos from the magnificent celebration. Interestingly, Michael and Catherine were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Personal affairs didn't prevent Douglas from actively acting and producing. So, in the same year 2000, he presented the movie Wonder Boys and together with his young wife appeared in the thriller Traffic. These two projects brought our hero 15 million. This was followed by the films One Night at Nicole's, Don't Say a Word, The In-Laws, and It Runs in the Family. The latter involved representatives of three generations of the Douglas family, Kirk and Diana, their son Michael and grandson Cameron. In 2003, the family of Michael and Catherine welcomed their daughter, Caracetta. After her birth, the celebrities moved to Bermuda, where our hero's mother is from. For more than 10 years, the couple lived in a quiet life, leaving only for filming, and the children didn't even know what their parents were doing. Their daughter recalled that as a child, she was sure that the main occupation of her dad's life was to bake pancakes for breakfast and please mom. The couple still owns this cozy nest, although they tried to sell it in 2019 for $10.6 million, but changed their minds. After a short break in his creative activity, Douglas returned to the screens in 2006 with the films The Sentinel, You, Me and Dupree, and a year later presented the comedy drama King of California. Then came the movies Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt, Solitary Man, and the continuation of the 1987 drama Wall Street's Money Never Sleeps. You're the ninja generation. No income, no job, no assets. You got a lot to look forward to. <laughs> a busy period in his career again coincided with the vessitudes of private life. His eldest son Cameron was a drug addict and our hero had to forbid him to approach his family. In 2009, Cameron was accused of smuggling which led him behind bars. By the way, Michael himself also suffered from addiction and in the 90s received treatment in a rehab clinic. His son also managed to get over a dangerous addiction, and Catherine Zeta-Jones at that difficult time became a real support for the family. But soon, another misfortune struck them. In 2010, Michael was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer. Catherine did everything to help her husband heal, but soon she couldn't stand the stress, and she started showing signs of bipolar disorder. Her periods of incredible activity were replaced by the deepest depression, and Michael didn't take his wife's problems seriously at all. These events almost put an end to their union and they seriously talked about divorce, but still managed to make up. In 2012 to 2014, such films as Haywire and So It Goes, Beyond the Reach and the biographical drama Behind the Candelabra were released. In the latter, the actor played the legend of American show business pianist and entertainer Liberace. And this role became a real gift for him after his illness. He trained for a long time, recreating the voice of his character and studied his piano playing technique. Also during this period, the actor starred in the comedy drama Last Vegas, along with Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman. It's just winding up a little too fast, and I'm feeling old and alone. In 2015, Michael joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe playing the role of Hank Pym in the movie Ant-Man. He appeared in the same image in other projects, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and the animated series What If. In addition, during the period, the actor starred in the action movie Unlocked, the thriller Animal World, took part in the voiceover of the children's series Green Eggs and Ham, and presented the series The Kominsky Method. For this comedic role, which is rare for him, Douglas received another Golden Globe. Why? It is fine. Which is what I said. No, no, you said it with an attitude, and you said, fine. Forgive me. Fine. Jesus, let's just order. Fine. In addition, our hero worked as a producer on the prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the series rashed about a psychiatric hospital nurse. At the end of 2018, Michael Douglas's star was unveiled on the Hollywood Walk, dedicated to the 50th anniversary of his career. The actor admits that only work helps him keep in shape and to be fit, and he has a lot of projects. In February 2023, the premiere of the fantastic action movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, took place. 
where Douglas again played Hank Pym. The filming of the series Franklin About American President Benjamin Franklin has already begun, and work is underway on a historical series about the relationship between two other presidents, Reagan and Gorbachev. Neither age nor illness affected Douglas's intelligence, and he was still surprising others with his ability to instantly remember the names of people he sees for the first time, and to notice the slightest nuances that distinguish the manner of the interlocutor's behavior. He loves golf and Formula One, and also does a lot of charity work. As the UN peace envoy, he is on a mission to draw the world's attention to nuclear disarmament and the protection of human rights. Philanthropy Douglas's family affair through the registered fund, they send money to various organizations. The entire inheritance from Kirk Douglas of $61 million was also sent to a charity, especially since Michael's fortune greatly exceeds his father's capital. It is estimated at $350 million earned as an actor and producer. In addition, Douglas invests. However, after the 2008 crisis, when he lost about 35 to 40 percent of his fortune, Michael became more conservative in investments. Douglas owns a valuable real estate portfolio with assets all over the world, which he gradually sells for his own benefit. He owned a plot of land with an area of more than 12 acres in Westchester County, New York, which he bought in 2015 for $11.3 million and sold in 2019 for $20.5 million. Around the same time, he and Catherine paid only $4.5 million for a house in the wealthy suburb of Irvington in New York State. The three-story Georgian mansion has eight bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, several living rooms and dining rooms, an indoor swimming pool, and a picturesque view of the Hudson River. Douglas and his wife also own a large apartment in New York City overlooking Central Park. The 15-room penthouse includes a master bedroom and a cozy library. In 2021, the property was put up for sale, but apparently hasn't found its buyer yet. The actor can rarely be seen in commercial advertising. The exception is the German electronic stock trading company Comdirect. But the most interesting one is the 60-second video for the FBI, in which Michael appeared as his character from Wall Street. It is known that Douglas owns cars of different brands and times, from vintage to modern, in particular the Mercedes-Benz Army-type car and the Toyota Prius. Now, the Douglas acting dynasty is continued by Michael's eldest son, Cameron. But so far, his films haven't enjoyed great success. And which movie with this actor do you like the most? Okay. 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 Peter Dinklage, how Tyrion from Game of Thrones lives and how much he earns. Peter Hayden Dinklage was born on June 11, 1969 in Morristown, New Jersey, in an ordinary family. His mother, Diane, worked as a music teacher in elementary school and his father, John Carl, was an insurance agent, but he was out of work for several months a year. The actor has German, Irish, and English blood in his veins. At the time of Peter's birth, the family was already raising a son, Jonathan. In early childhood, the future actor was diagnosed with a rare gene mutation, achondroplasia. This is a type of dwarfism in which the growth of limbs slows down Although the head and body develop according to the norm, it is noteworthy that only Peter was diagnosed with this condition. The rest of the family members are absolutely healthy. At the age of five, the boy underwent surgery to straighten his legs, but doctors couldn't do more. In adolescence, Dinklage's height stopped at four feet five inches, while his weight was 77 pounds. Peter attended the Del Barton Catholic School for Boys. Because of his appearance, he was often bullied by his peers, and because of that, he became hot-tempered and unsociable. In an interview, Dinklage admitted that he managed to cope with the pressure of society thanks to his family, who taught him to accept himself. With age, the boy began to treat his condition with humor, which added to his confidence. In the fifth grade, Peter played the main role in the school production of The Velveteen Rabbit and received such a storm of applause that he decided to become an actor. After that, he participated in many productions until graduation. In his spare time, Dinklage developed his talent by performing puppet shows for neighbors with his older brother. By the way, Jonathan also had good acting skills, but his love for music prevailed 
and he became a professional violinist. An interesting fact is that Bruce Springsteen's manager lived next door to the Dinklages. The famous musician often rehearsed there, and according to Peter's family, it was loud and they didn't like it at all. After graduating from high school in 1987, the actor enrolled at the Bennington Theatre College in Vermont, where he chose to major in playwriting. There the guy proved himself as a talented and hardworking student, as well as a wonderful friend. Peter spent his extracurricular time, like all ordinary students, at loud parties with alcohol and music. He even performed with his own punk band, Wizzy, where he played trumpet and was one of the singers. In memory of his care for youth, Dinklage has a noticeable scar along his face, which he received during one of his concerts, jumping on stage. In 1991, the young man graduated from college. After that, he and his best friend Ian Bell went to New York, where they planned to open a theater company. The guys didn't have much money, so they rented a cheap apartment in Brooklyn with a horde of rats and no heating. For a long time, Peter couldn't find a job. Theater groups didn't hire him, and movie producers only offered him to play leprechauns or gnomes. He refused to take them on principle, since most of them mocked people with dwarfism. After numerous casting failures, Dinklage got a job at a data processing company, but the money he earned was barely enough to pay the rent. Peter admitted that at that time he could often afford only a pack of chips a day. In the end, the guys were evicted for non-payment, after which Peter had to ask friends for a place to stay. Soon Dinklage got lucky and received a role in an independent movie. In 1995, the aspiring actor made a screen debut in the comedy drama Living in Oblivion, where his partner on the set was Steve Buscemi who became his good friend. Do you know anyone who's had a dream with a dwarf in it? No! I don't even have dreams with dwarves in them. The only place I've seen dwarves in dreams is in stupid movies like this. In the film, Peter actually played himself, an actor who, due to dwarfism, is offered only stereotypical roles. However, despite the fact that Dinklage's acting received high reviews from critics, he couldn't find an agent. In 1996, Peter starred in Mickey Rourke's action movie, Bullet, but was not even listed in the official credits. In subsequent years, he only received minor roles in low-budget films, among which the most notable were Safe Men, Human Nature, Just the Kiss, 13 Moons, and the TV series Third Watch. In 2003, Dinklage appeared in the drama The Station Agent, where he was cast as a reclusive dwarf doomed to endless ridicule by others. Really angry. About what? Being a dwarf. This role was a real breakthrough in his career and brought him many nominations for film awards, including the Screen Actors Guild Award for outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role. In the same year, the actor starred in the Christmas comedy film Elf and in the drama Tiptoes, where his partners on the set were Gary Oldman, Matthew McConaughey, and Kate Beckinsale. Peter also appeared on the stage of the New York Public Theater, playing the titular role in Shakespeare's Richard III, which was his longtime dream. Subsequently, Dinklage performed in many more plays. His love of the theater played a crucial role in the actor's personal life. Back in the late 90s, he met a theater director, Erica Schmidt, and a strong friendship arose between the young people based on mutual interest in dramatic art. And over the years, it turned into love. In 2004, Peter proposed to his beloved, and a year later, the couple had a modest wedding. In 2005, Dinklage starred in the TV series Life As We Know It and Entourage. 
the drama The Baxter, the comedy surviving Eden, and in the drama Lassie, where he played an artist of a traveling circus. Then his filmography was replenished with the TV series Threshold and Nip Tuck, the romantic fantasy Penelope, and the crime drama Find Me Guilty, which also starred Vin Diesel. Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office, Peter's acting received high reviews from critics. In 2007, Dinklage played a mad scientist in the family fantasy Underdog, and also starred in the British comedy Death at a Funeral as Peter who appears at a funeral ceremony and declares that he was the lover of the deceased, demanding money from his relatives for silence. How do you think that makes me feel? No, I'll tell you how that makes me feel. It, cheap. Like a cheap slut. Don't you think I deserve something? The film became so popular that three years later, they made an American remake where Peter again played the same character, only with a different cast. In 2008, the actor appeared in the movie Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, where he played the dwarf Trumpkin. After the release of the film, critics unanimously stated that Dinklage failed to eliminate the stereotypical image, and he himself considered participation in this project a great disappointment. Then Peter's filmography was replenished with such works as the sitcom 30 Rock, the drama St. John of Las Vegas, the drama I Love You Too, the thriller The Last Rites of Ransom Pride, and the dark comedy Pete Smalls is Dead, where the man also acted as an executive producer. In 2011, Dinklage appeared in the romantic comedy drama A Little Bit of Heaven, as well as in the acclaimed series Game of Thrones, based on the series of novels A Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. What you see is a dwarf. If I had been born a peasant, they might have left me out in the woods to die. Alas, I was born a Lannister of Casterly Rock. Things are expected of me. It is noteworthy that Peter became the first approved actor who didn't even participate in the casting. In the series, Peter played Tyrion Lannister, nicknamed the Imp, who led a rampant lifestyle. After the premiere of the first season, Dinklage's photo appeared on the cover of Rolling Stones, Playboy magazine called him a sexy man, and GQ awarded him the title of Stud of the Year 2011. The actor himself is skeptical about these titles, as he doesn't believe that in reality, women will be interested in people with dwarfism. Subsequently, Peter starred in seven more seasons of Game of Thrones, until 2019, In an interview, he admitted that when he got his hands on the script, he started reading it from the end to make sure that his character would live to see the last episode. At the same time, with each season, the popularity of his character only increased, and eventually he took second place in the ranking of the best characters of the series, second only to his on-screen sister, Cersei. At some point, I want to hear how a Night's Watch recruit became King of the North. As long as you tell me how a Lannister became hand to Daenerys Targaryen. Long and bloody tail. To be honest, I was drunk for most of it. By the way, Lena Headey, who played Cersei, is a longtime friend of Peter, and he advised the directors to invite her to the role. It's worth mentioning that among the actors of the series, Peter received the largest number of awards, four Emmys, a Golden Globe Award, a Saturn Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. And the New York Times called Peter Dinklage one of the eight actors who turned television into art. Game of Thrones has become the most successful HBO project of all time, as well as the most expensive in the fantasy genre. According to some reports, Peter's fee per episode was $150,000 in the first two seasons, $300,000 in the third and fourth seasons, half a million in the fifth and sixth seasons, and the last season brought him $1.1 million per episode. Thus, Dinklage's total income from filming in the series exceeded $30 million. In between Game of Thrones seasons, the actor participated in other projects, voicing cartoon characters Scrat's Continental Crack Up Part 2, Ice Age Continental Drift, Rick and Morty, and Angry Birds Movie 2. He also voiced Tyrion in the video game based on the series. In addition, Peter appeared in several films, 
In 2013, his filmography was replenished with the drama A Case of You and the comedy Nights of Badassdom. And in 2014, he appeared in the dramas Lowdown and The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, as well as the fantastic action movie X-Men Days of Future Past, where he played the evil scientist Bolivar Trask. By the time you see the need for my program, it'll be too late and you will have lost two wars in one lifetime. It's worth noting that Dinklage wanted to star in this film so much that he agreed to the role without even reading the script. His acting received high reviews from critics and he himself was nominated for the MTV Channel Award for Best Villain. In 2015, Peter starred in the drama Taxi and in the fantastic comedy Pixels, which was criticized and was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti Award. In 2016, Dinklage, together with his business partner David Ginsberg, founded a film production company, Estuary Films. In the same year, his filmography was replenished with the comedy The Boss, and in the following year, he appeared in the detective Rememory, the dramas Three Christs and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, starring Francis McDormand and Woody Harrelson. You two boyfriend and girlfriend? Early stages, you know? Is that right? We had a couple dates. The latter picture received high reviews from critics, and the creators, along with the actors, received many awards, including two Oscars and four Golden Globes. Despite the fact that Peter himself didn't receive anything for his role, the audience noted his image as one of the most memorable. In 2018, the actor played the main role in the fantastic drama I Think We're Alone Now, and in the biographical film My Dinner with Hervé which tells about the last days of the French actor, Hervé Villachez. Being famous is like being drunk, except the whole world is drunk with you. By the way, in both films, Peter was also a producer. In the same year, Dinklage appeared as a giant dwarf in the superhero movie Avengers, Infinity War, which became one of the highest grossing films in history. What happened here? You were supposed to protect us. Asgard was supposed to protect us! Asgard is destroyed. In 2019, Peter played a cameo role in the comedy Between Two Ferns, the movie. And next year he starred in the thriller, I Care A Lot. He also voiced one of the characters of the cartoon, The Crudes, A New Age. In 2021, Dinklage appeared in the title role in the musical Serrano, based on the plot of the stage play of the same name, the script of which was written by his wife. Freak. <laughs> Is that it? Have you exhausted your dictionary of scorn? Interestingly enough, he literally begged Erica to choose him for this role, as he dreamed of singing on stage. However, unlike the original work, the disadvantage of the main character is not a huge nose, but a small stature. For his brilliant performance in the musical, Peter was nominated for a Golden Globe. Now Peter's acting career is still on the rise. In the summer of 2022, the comedy American Dreamer premiered. Also the filming of the movies She Came to Me, The Toxic Avenger, and Brothers has already been completed and The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and Hit Pig are at the stage of filming. To date, Dinklage's fortune is estimated at $25 million, which includes film royalties and advertising contracts. In 2017, Peter starred in an advertising short film of the beer brand Estrella Dam. And in 2018, he rapped in a commercial for Doritos and Mountain Dew with Morgan Freeman. The actor also advertised Cisco's The Network Intuitive. The funny thing is that Dinklage, having become famous, signed such a serious contract because at the beginning of his career, he was only offered the role of elves in Christmas advertising, which he refused. The celebrity carefully hides his personal life from the public. Peter doesn't have social media accounts and is very angry when paparazzi are watching his family. 
The media learned that in December 2011, his wife gave birth to his daughter, whose name they don't disclose. And in September 2017, another child appeared in the family, whose gender and name are also unknown. According to some reports, the children don't inherit their father's condition. Dinklage and his family lived in Manhattan for a long time, where it could often be seen walking his dog or riding a scooter. A few years ago, the couple moved to a country house with a huge garden, which Peter enjoys taking care of. But all this remains hidden from the cameras and the prying eyes of fans. The actor owns a Chrysler 300, which was designed specifically for his condition. For obvious reasons, he also orders custom-made outfits or buys clothes in children's stores. Dinklage has been a vegetarian since the age of 16. When he needed to eat meat on the set of Game of Thrones, instead of real meat, they used tofu or just fake food. Peter is also a member of several animal rights organizations. One, he voiced the video Face Your Food on behalf of PETA, promoting eating vegan food for ethical reasons. The actor was repeatedly asked if he, as a celebrity, wanted to represent the interests of people with dwarfism. Dinklage replied that even now, he doesn't always manage to put up with his condition. So it would be hypocritical to try to help people cope with something that he can't cope with himself. However, he still took advantage of his popularity to draw attention to one incident. In 2012, in his speech at the Golden Globe ceremony, he mentioned the actor with dwarfism, Martin Henderson, who was thrown by a drunk rugby player at a New Zealand bar. As a result of the fall, Henderson suffered spinal damage and eventually died of his injuries in 2016. Peter became world famous after the release of Game of Thrones, but his filmography is full of other outstanding works. What movie with Peter Dinklage do you like the most? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.